In this video, we're going to be converting my Bearded Dragon setup into a bioactive setup. Okay, well first things first, we gotta take her out of there. So let's do that real quick. Hey, sweetie. There's those black eyes. Focus. Put her in there, she'll be okay in there for a while. And let's get to it. Okay, now we're going to take everything out of her current tank and give it a good wipe down. Some of the sand we're going to be reusing um, to mix up our substrate with. Well, I found a rogue cricket in there while we're taking everything out. So uh, we'll give that to her to keep her occupied for a whopping five seconds. Okay, back to the build. Okay, now we're gonna scoop out some of the sand and put it into a container to mix up with our organic soil and charcoal. Okay, that's fairly clean. There's a little bit of sand in the bottom. I could pick it all up with a wet-dry vacuum, but I'm not too worried about it since we're mixing sand into the substrate anyway. So, here we have our container. I have some lump wood charcoal. From what I've read, it's not necessary in this uh, setup we're doing, but it can't hurt. And that's all the sand that was in the enclosure. Here we have some organic soil with no uh, perlite or any other additive uh, junk in it just in case it is ingested. And over here, this is from other projects. It's just uh, coker, cocoa fiber mixed with uh, dried sphagnum moss. So we're gonna mix all that up in the container and uh, put it in there. Now I'm adding water just a little bit here and there. Um, you obviously don't want it sopping wet, but you want it to kind of hold form when you compress it. It's still a little dry, but we're going to add some of this uh, soil. Not sure how damp that's going to be, so let's get some of our dirt in there. Let's see what we're looking at. Ooh. 
the reason for the sand is to help um, with drainage in the soil, or the substrate rather. The uh, sphagnum moss and the cocoa fiber will uh, provide food for the microfauna we're going to be putting in there. And the organic potting soil will help with the plants we're going to put in there. Um, I don't know how well the plants are going to do, not because of the conditions, but because uh, the bearded dragon, Clementine, will be munching on them. So they're going to have to probably be replaced for the most part, I imagine. But uh, we'll see, and herbs are cheap. Um, I can also grow them outside of the tank to get them nice and big and established before actually adding them. Get some more of that dirt in there. There is on the moist side as I suspected, so we'll get everything mixed up before I add more of it. More uh, water, rather. See how well it clumps. See how that's clumping up nice. You can pretty much sculpt it and it generally holds its form. And that's what you're looking for. We're not going to be watering this all the time. Maybe misting it a few times a week if that. Uh, going to be a little bit of trial and error on it. So I'm going to continue mixing this up. Get it all nice and even. And uh, yeah, we'll come back. Well, it looks like Socket has a new friend. She's not freaked out. He's not freaked out. Everybody has. Okay, so the new substrate that we mixed up is in there. It already looks a thousand times better against the uh, backgrounds I had painted in there. It's about three inches deep in the lowest spot. I would have liked to have aimed a little deeper, but that should be okay. We can always just mix them up down the road um, if need be. It's easy enough. So now is my favorite part. Uh, escaping it. So we're going to use most of what was already in there. We got our rocks, we got our cork bark, a um, piece of driftwood. I don't remember exactly what driftwood it is. I bought this probably five, six years ago at least. And uh, picked up some herbs for her. We got oregano, rosemary, and some uh, peppermint. Now, generally any herb that you commonly buy in the store is safe for them. Um, I heard basil is the only one you want to keep in moderation. It can make them sick if eaten too much, but um, they should do just fine in the uh, substrate we mixed up. The only thing that's going to inhibit their uh, success is going to be clementine munching on them. But that's part of the reason why we're going with a bioactive setup, so she has uh, some foliage to munch on in between feedings. So we'll see how they survive. They're cheap enough to replace as needed. 
and uh, we'll go from there. So let's get everything in. So I'm trying to keep her basking spot where it is. It's easier than moving the lamp. Um, just trying to come up with something I like. This is just like aquascaping a fish tank. You want it visually and naturally appealing. And you think it'd be easier to do because you're not in water. But it's actually Maybe because um, I don't aquascape or scape terrestrial setups as much. And it's actually uh, a little difficult, I guess. But uh, I like how that looks. The cork bark will uh, create little humid spots on the cool side of the uh, Closure here, so our springtails and isopods are going to hide under there, just like when you uh, lift up any rock or log in your backyard or in the woods. It's uh, it's nice and damp, and that's where you have all your little critters running around. So we're going, so we're trying to uh, de uh, replicate that in this enclosure. Um, obviously, it's going to dry out quite a bit on this side here being under the heat lamp it gets about 100 plus on that side but it stays about 75 80 degrees on this side so I'm happy with that if I want to play around with it after we plant we can do that but uh, let's get our uh, our herbs prepared to, uh, to put in okay first we're going to do the rosemary I'm not going to do this for every plant on uh, camera, but we'll do it with this one just so you see what I'm doing. But we're going to remove as most of this dirt as we can. Um, two reasons. One, I don't know what soil this is. And B, it's got all this perlite in here. All this, these little white guys. Normally that's fine for plants, um, but I just don't want Clementine ingesting them accidentally. I don't think she's going to sit there and eat the dirt, but she might sample it when she uh, is first put in there because she's never been on it before. So we're going to knock off as much of the dirt as we can, and we're going to rinse off the rest of the root ball before planting. Luckily, these plants are fairly dry, so this is all coming apart real nice and easy. All this extra root on the bottom, we're just going to rip that right off. That shouldn't hurt the plant too much, and it'll uh, stimulate new growth. Oh, that smells so nice. 
hopefully the weather turns quickly so uh, I can get out there do some gardening I'm sure some other of uh, you guys are uh, also gardeners and the smell of this is just bringing back those memories all right so most of it's off got a majority of this uh, perlite out so let's uh, give it a quick rinse That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for our remaining herbs and we'll pick back up from there. Okay, we've got all of our plants cleaned up and prepared for uh, planting. Um, in the excitement of everything, I completely forgot to uh, incorporate her water and uh, food dish in there. So move the cork bark and rocks around a little bit to put that in and uh, now we can plant. Start with the rosemary first. No, let's do it this way. Grab an oregano. Where do we want to put this? I say this is a lot easier than trying to plant in an aquarium. You don't have to worry about nothing floating back up. Let's grab the other oregano. Last, but certainly not least, one of my personal favorite herbs, mint. I have a bunch uh, growing in the backyard up here in New England. It is still a perennial, so it comes back year after year. But uh, it's mid-April, so um, it hasn't come back yet. So during the year, we'll uh, steal some from the yard to put in. See how well this one does in here. And, uh... No, I think I'm going to put on the other side of the rock here. I know in the garden, this plant is extremely forgiving. I can grow it in shade, parcel shade, direct sun, and it seems to do pretty well. And the deer don't like it. One of the few things deer don't destroy in my yard. All right. Just give everything a good compact. Unlike a lot of uh, jungle style uh, terrariums, um, it doesn't need to be extremely loose. You kind of want it compact. Where uh, dragons come from, it's very arid and uh, compact ground. Which is why we made the soil or uh, substrate the way we did so that it can compact. All right, I'm happy with it.
Now that looks much more proper than when it was just sand. Okay, now for the finishing touch to make this completely bioactive is adding our cleanup crew. Now I added some dirt from one of my uh, established terrariums that has uh, springtails and some uh, little white other uh, isopods in it. I placed the soil underneath the cork barks. Like I said, that's a good uh, microclimate for them. I then went around in the uh, woods and picked up some more guys. Got some uh, millipedes in there and uh, other isopods. Um, these are completely safe if he decides to snack on them, but chances are he will never see them once they're in there. So let's add those and, uh, and add our dragon back in. There's a few new guys. If you look closely in that uh, lighter colored dirt, you'll see some movement of the springtails I added. So let's put the cork back on top of them and uh, we'll let them kind of run around and uh, find spots to hide before we, uh, before we put climbing time back in. Okay, I'm happy with the end result. So, um, given about 20 or 30 minutes or so, um, I'm not seeing any of our uh, cleanup crew running around up top. I think they've all burrowed or hidden under uh, the bark. So let's get Clementine inside. I'm sure she's uh, excited to warm up under her heat bulb and uh, explore her new uh, enclosure. She's a little cold, um, so we'll let her uh, warm up and we'll check back in on her in a little bit. <laughs> 